In this last of the feedback videos, let's look at the final feedback network, which is a shunt series feedback. Now, what happens in the shunt series feedback is basically the input, the feedback network appears as a shunt, which means that at the input, it is a current that is being corrected. And since it's an output series, which means that the output is sampled as a series, right? And so for this would be applied in the case of a current amplifier, where the input is a current, the output is a current, the feedback network samples the output current and generates a current that is proportional to the output current, right? So the feedback network is also a current amplifier that is taking in an input current and giving out an output current. So in this case, again, your gain in closed loop gain is going to be given by A by 1 plus A beta. Now, this is a current amplifier, which means that you want its input resistance to be as small as possible and you want its output resistance to be as high as possible, which means that because of feedback, your input resistance reduces from Ri to Ri by 1 plus A beta, where 1 plus A beta is the amount of feedback. Similarly, your output resistance increases and so it give, it's given by R0 into 1 plus A beta. So higher the feedback, more the output looks like a current source. Like always, let's look at how to calculate the impact of loading of the feedback network on this. So here again, my open loop, once you identify which is the open loop part of the circuit and which is the feedback network, you all now you now need to identify the value of beta and assess how this feedback network loads the output and loads the input right and again if you look at this to find beta as i mentioned beta is sampling an output current and giving in corrective feedback signal which is also a current so essentially your feedback network consists of an input current and an output current so the way we measure beta is essentially short the output and measure the gain between the short circuit output current versus the input current and that essentially gives you the value of beta which is again ampere upon ampere if you think about the units of beta. Now to assess the impact of loading of this circuit at the output and the input, at the output remember it's going to appear as a series connection right because you're sampling a current and the way so you want to assess the input resistance of this current amplifier if you will so the way we would do this is we short the output and we measure the ratio of the input voltage to the input current and that essentially gives you the input resistance of the feedback network which is essentially the resistance that shows up at node 2 so therefore r22 is given by v2 upon i2 when the output of the feedback network is shorted Similarly, to calculate the loading at the input of the feedback, uh, input of the open loop amplifier or the output of the feedback network, the output is a current, the input signal is a current. So in this case, we open circuit the input signal, that is send the input signal to zero, apply an output voltage, measure an output current, and hence the R11 is given by V1 upon I1 when the input to the feedback network is essentially zero. Now remember, this is a shunt series feedback. So R11 is going to appear as a shunt resistance at the input and R22 is going to appear as a series resistance at the output. So the equivalent circuit in such a case is going to essentially consist of this open loop gain A, R11 appearing as a resistance in parallel to RS and R22 appearing as a resistance in series with RL. And again, this circuit can now be solved and you can calculate the value of I0 upon Is and that's essentially going to give you the open loop gain of the circuit. An example of this would be a circuit which looks like this. Again, here you have an op, op, op amp. You have an input current here. Again, the way you identify that there is, this is a shunt feedback here is because here at the input, you have a nodal connection indicating that currents are either being subtracted or added. And again here, because the output signal is shown to be I0, therefore you have an output current. This M1 is converting the output voltage of this amplifier into a current. And that current is being converted into another current through R2. 
right? So again, you need to identify the feedback network. The feedback network essentially consists of this pair of resistors R1 and R2. Now to calculate beta, what do we have here? We have this I0 flowing into R2 and R1 connected in this fashion. And the feedback current is the current that flows through R2. Right? And so essentially to calculate beta, what I need to do is short the output, which means I want to measure, I'm going to short this node here and I want to measure the value of I2. So I2 is nothing but R1 upon R1 plus R2 times I1. Or the feedback factor is given by R1 by R1 plus R2. Once I know the feedback factor, now this circuit again becomes very easy to find its loading because it's a bunch of resistors. So at the input, if I look at the input of the feedback network, I'm going to short the output of the feedback network. So the input resistance here is R1 parallel R2. So it's R1 parallel R2. That's going to be the load that this feedback network shows at the output of the open loop amplifier. If I look at the loading at the input, of the open loop amplifier at the output of the feedback network, I essentially have to zero this current, which means that this is an open circuit. Now, when I apply a voltage at this end, the current is going to be determined by R1 plus R2. So therefore, this feedback network loads the input of the open loop amplifier as R1 plus R2. So if I now redraw the circuit, my input essentially looks like IS, RS, Remember, it's a shunt series feedback, so the load shows up as a shunt connection here as R1 plus R2, and then an RI. VI is the voltage that is developed across the input ports of the amplifier that is converted to an output voltage A0 VI, which then is sent to the transistor, and the transistor then converts it to a current, which flows through a load resistance of R1 parallel R2, and so therefore, we can easily write VI as this IS flowing through the parallel combination of these three resistors. And therefore, I can write my V0 upon VGS1 as essentially this is a source degraded common source amplifier. So this essentially becomes V0 upon VGS1 becomes this expression. And so therefore, I can write my I0 by VG1 as this expression right here. And hence, my open loop gain essentially translates to this large factor, which is I0 by VG1 into VG1 by IS, which is this large expression. So again, this is the open loop gain of the circuit. I know the feedback factor. A beta is known, then I can calculate all the other require or the, all the other parameters of the closed loop circuit.